Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ashish Kutiara. I'm here from Austin, Texas, and the New York traffic today got me pretty nervous whether I would make it here or not. So I made it with 15 minutes to go. So um, I have been at HP and a host of smaller companies and done a lot of roles between development, production support, product management, etc. Nowadays, I do things DevOps. And one of the challenges that we find in really big globally distributed teams are, you know, how do you actually collaborate? So at the center of all things DevOps, you know, you can change a lot of things. You need to make a lot of improvements. You need to change the processes, your, you know, teams maybe, the way they're structured or the tools that you use. But collaboration is always known to be the heart of DevOps. How do you get the teams to work together? How do you center them around products and services to kind of achieve things together as a team, get those constant feedback loops? And as you can imagine, in smaller to mid-sized companies, it may be easy to kind of move around teams and center them around products or services. Huge corporations like you know, Hewlett Packard Enterprise um, it's really tough to kind of do organizational changes and move teams around to get teams to collaborate. And especially when you're globally distributed, it's a real challenge. So I'm here to talk about a little bit about how we've been doing this in our own IT organization and our own software R&D organization to get teams to collaborate and work closer. So our organization, like you know, any other, our enterprise, like any other big, large enterprise, has still got its silos. You have people in the dev and QA teams. You have people in you know, change management, support, infrastructure. We have centers across the US, India, Israel, you know, all parts of Europe and China. And it's really hard for all of them to be in the same time, same time zone as you can imagine. So what have we done? We have used the practice of chat ops. If you're familiar with chat ops, it's a term introduced by GitHub. And I'll talk a little bit about, you know, what does chat ops really mean? So how many of you here, you know, are familiar with or actually work with a chat ops kind of platform or um, some of you? Okay. So chat ops is really, you know, what is it? It's, it's nothing very new, but it's got a new take on how we do collaboration using chat rooms. And chat ops really are persistent chat rooms, which means they're always on. You don't take them away when... Uh, you know, your work is done, you're always collaborating through these chat rooms. I find email, I, you know, I heard somebody say once that email is very anti-DevOps matter. And I, I think I believe in that. I mean, how many of you are actually fed up with email? You know, a lot of us are just, what's the next new thing that's going to change it? This may or may not, but, you know, internally we have found some teams have gone down about 30 to 40 percent with their email volume having used, you know, these chat ops. So what's the difference with, you know, your IRCs and Skypes and Messengers than, you know, what, what chat ops is? Ours is built on FlowDoc. You can, you know, use many of the different platforms that are out there. I think the key difference here is it really is a chat system or chat practice between people and systems, right? Really systems like man and machine collaboration, I like to call it. Let's talk a little bit more about that. So as you you know, interact with these persistent chat rooms. Um, the, we had a manifesto within our own IT organization on how we would do DevOps, how we would get the teams to collaborate together closely. And one of the things that we agreed upon was, you know, there would be transparency across the teams. Whatever anybody did, you know, everybody needs to know about it, and everybody needs to share that common knowledge. So as we augment our chat rooms with these bots, or the scripts that interact with machines, we are able to not only chat between the different teams in real time or if they go offline and come back, you know, it's never gone, you can see what the status is, but we also start to kind of like interact with these bots. We can send them out to go get statuses from the machines. You never have to leave the chat room to go to your machine, turn the back, or go into another room and, you know, kind of find out what's happening with it when an incident happens. At the same time, as you do this, you know, you're able to see those events. You're able to see the metrics of the machines. You're able to also issue it actions so that within the chat room, you're taking those actions. Other people are collaborating with you. You can pull in the people who need to be there. For example, it might be the back-end engineer who designed the processes. And run those actions on the machines to fix those um, you know, problems you might be having in production, you might be having in your test systems. 
And you know, this is one of our applications app, Pulse, which monitors mobile applications. And right within from here, you can activate your chatbot, or you, from the chatbot, from the chat ops window, you can activate the application through the chatbot and take any actions to remediate you know, any issues that you might be having. So most essential part that we find is people actually gravitate to and stick with chat rooms, not just for work, but for a lot of the social aspect. So as we started using the chat ops platform across our teams, we found out that people started to interact. It wasn't Steve sitting in Colorado that I don't know who's in the testing team. It's somebody I share a passion maybe for soccer because his son plays soccer and my son plays soccer. And we found that a lot of the teams were actually sharing major sporting event scores live as the you know, events were going on while they were working. So it was a very interesting you know, fallout of this, but it added a lot of aspect to you know, the social part of it, the you know, fun part of it. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but we don't have unlimited travel budgets anymore to fly everybody in the same room and do the same work, right? It's just, just, just the reality today. And with this, we also found that you know, not only did it add to the transparency, it added to the you know, fun social work and uh, fun part to the social, sh fun part to the work, uh, but we also started seeing that there was a lot of common knowledge building as people actually solve problems because what you don't want to have is you know, just have a few superheroes in different teams who need to be always called in to do the work. Because these are persistent chat rooms, any, event that you, any incident that you saw, the actions that you took are all logged in there and are always present so that the next time this happens, you, know, you can leverage that common knowledge across teams. One of the other unexpected fallouts of this for us in a positive manner was our auditors loved this. Because you know, anything that was done in this platform is automatically logged. It's automatically recorded. So when the auditors came in, you know, we could provide them all these things that we had done, and they were all kind of monitored, all logged, and made it very easy for them. In fact, they were very enthusiastic in suggesting you know, other ways we could make it easy for them when they actually came uh, to do some more work next time. So we are still siloed, but we see that you know, with chat ops, it becomes very, very seamless. And we find ourselves working as one team. And it doesn't matter where your geographical location is or what role you're playing with the right permissions and the right securities. We're able to give people the access they need to do the work they do and commonly solve these problems. That has accelerated our DevOps adoption and you know, the speed that we need with feedback loops. Anything that, in, that happens in production shows up you know, in, in across all the environments for all the teams. So I'll end this presentation with a short video. You know, imagine if your work life was to kind of change this way using chat ops and bots.
So we quite don't have the floating virtual bots on your desktops yet, but the concept of having bots at your desktops in the same chat room that you share with your team members is pretty real. And if you'd like to know more, you know, come by our booth and we'll demo some of these concepts to you. Thank you very much.